Bill, both sides tonight here demanding more police protection. The Hasidic community says that as revenge for the accident which killed the young boy, a Hasidic man, a Jewish man, was stabbed to death two hours later. They say it was revenge, but of course there are no hard and true facts here. There is just tension, there is just passion. And you can see behind me the police of the 71st Precinct clearly mobilizing at this hour. There is a demonstration ongoing by both sides in other parts of Brooklyn. So far, six police officers have been hurt by flying rocks. Three people have been arrested. The summer of 1991 was a scorcher in New York City. The absence of rain and the torrid temperatures pushed African and Caribbean American residents of Crown Heights, where there was a paucity of air conditioning, out to the streets. Milling about, their conversations often centred upon the political and racially charged environment. Tensions were high because unemployment was high, and services that the city provided were down. It was an embittered time for these two Crown Heights communities. And as the African-American community struggled and the Jewish community seeming to thrive economically, tensions began to rise. Racial issues had plagued the Koch administration and attention to trying to repair the rifts was sidelined by corruption scandal that involved several New York City Democrats. A new face was indicated and David Dinkins was pledging far more than just being a new face. He was guaranteeing hope and solace to a fractured city. The city's first African-American mayor entered office assuring racial healing and famously referring to the city's demographic diversity as a gorgeous mosaic. It was assumed that an African-American mayor would soothe the city's black and Hispanic communities and restore a degree of racial harmony and perception of fair treatment after a contentious Koch era. The black community viewed Dinkins as a great hope, and he was also heavily supported by the Jewish community. His ability to deliver was similar to buying a scratch and win lottery ticket, a brief thrill that made no particular sense. Two years into his term, the problems remained, and the frustrations compounded. And with the sweltering heat of the summer, claims that David Dinkins was a wimp for not doing anything about the suspected beating of an African-American woman by a Korean shopkeeper, and that the rumours that the Jewish community was buying up all the buildings in an already crowded Crown Heights, the pan was set to boil over. The problem began just after 8 last night when a car driven by a Hasidic man went out of control, eventually slamming into a pair of 7-year-old children. Gavin Cato was dead on arrival at the hospital, his cousin, Angela Cato, remains in serious condition tonight. The station wagon's driver was treated and released from a different hospital after being rushed there by the private Hetzola ambulance, and it's that treatment which ignited the initial debate. Their medical attention was not the same medical attention that the Jewish gentleman got. You understand what I'm saying? They, they, they helped him before they helped the children. And the children were the victims, not him. Three hours after the crash, 29-year-old Yankel Rosenbaum, an Orthodox Jew visiting from Australia, was walking home when he was set upon by 12 to 20 black youths shouting, Kill the Jew, and there's a Jew. He was beaten, his skull was fractured, and he was stabbed several times. The police soon found Lemrick Nelson hiding behind a bush with a bloody knife, and brought him and four other suspects to Rosenbaum, who was able to identify only Nelson. The police and Mayor David Dinkins had visited Rosenbaum that night at Kings County Hospital. They were assured by the hospital staff that Rosenbaum would survive. Ironically, an appalling medical mistake resulted in the death of Rosenbaum several hours later. Residents were angered because the driver was questioned, but so far not charged with any crime. And because the more seriously hurt children were apparently ignored by Hasidic private ambulance volunteers who arrived ahead of a city ambulance crew. Some believe that Gavin died because the Jewish ambulance crew were unwilling to help non-Jews. There was a rumour at the time that Lavish was intoxicated. A breath alcohol test administered by the police 70 minutes later indicated that this was not the case. Other rumours circulated shortly after the accident, including Lavish was on his cell phone, Lavish did not have a valid driver's licence, and that the police prevented people, including Gavin Cato's father, from assisting in the rescue of his children. They didn't take care of the children. They leave the children on the ground and take care of the drivers and their passengers from the car. Later that evening, as crowds and rumours grew, people threw bottles and rocks. Someone reportedly shouted, Let's go to Kingston Avenue and get a Jew. A number of black youths set off westward toward Kingston Avenue, just over half a mile away from Ultica Avenue, a street of predominantly Jewish residents several blocks away. 
vandalising cars and throwing rocks and balls as they went. For three days following the accident, numerous African Americans and Caribbean Americans of the neighbourhood joined by growing numbers of non-residents rioted in Crown Heights. During the riots, Jews were injured, stores were looted and cars and homes were damaged. An additional 350 police officers were added to the regular duty roster on August 20th and were assigned to Crown Heights in an attempt to quell the riot in. The mayor left PS 167 on Eastern Parkway early this evening to talk with the angry crowd outside. His theme, though, wasn't selling in Crown Heights tonight. We've got to increase okay. the peace. Increase the peace. Increase the peace. Increase the peace. Increase the peace. The dominant theme is no peace because the people on the streets say there has been no justice. His honor did not walk from the school to the home of the black children struck down by the automobile on Monday as he planned. He had to drive in a convoy protected by lines of riot equipped police instead. The police are all here to protect the mayor who's gone inside the Cato house. Occasionally rocks and bottles are coming from the far end of the crowd over to the police lines. You can tell the cops would like to withdraw but they're obviously going to stay here until the mayor is outside. The rocks and bottles rain down periodically, even one hitting the mayor's car at one point, damaging the roof, while he pleaded on the steps for calm. I want to avoid further tragedy and further hurt and further harm. It ended badly. David Dinkins, the first black mayor of New York City, had to be escorted to his car in this predominantly black neighborhood as elements of the crowd alternately cheered and booed. The divisions run deep even within the black community of Crown Heights. By the time the three days of rioting had ended, 152 police officers and 38 civilians were injured, 27 vehicles were destroyed, 7 stores were looted or burned, and 225 cases of robbery and burglary were committed. At least 129 arrests were made during the riots, including 122 black and 7 whites. The damage to property was estimated at $1 million. After the riots were eventually brought under control, the area started to rebuild, but tensions remained high between the two communities. But since 1991, the two communities have tried to work together to improve relationships. Groups like the Crown Heights Meditation Centre and Project Care, a coalition of community leaders have built community initiatives to bring together the different neighbours of Crown Heights. And in 2016, to mark the 25th anniversary of the riot, the community hosted an inaugural festival called One Crown Heights to celebrate the unity between the two communities. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Videos were a little irregular back because obviously coronavirus and stuff like that. Um, but hopefully I can start posting properly again. And if you enjoyed this video and enjoyed the other videos on my channel, please like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, until next time.